Well, welcome back, wonderful people. If you remember from last week, we were finishing all the final prep and just getting ready to actually apply the copper coat anti-foul paint. And between you and me, behind the scenes, there was a fair amount of discussion about how to protect the very sensitive and very expensive copper coat from any potential rain. You almost got blasted. <laughs> My vote was to go with a pretty simple plastic skirt around the entire hull, which would work perfectly if the rain was light and without wind, which it is about three quarters of the time. But if it rained harder, or if there was wind to blow the moisture around, that <laughs> might not be enough protection. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. It has been decided we are definitely tarping over because, I mean, the outlook for the weather looks good, but, I mean, it would just absolutely suck if it started to rain and this is the real really crucial part of the painting so this this bottom paint is different than other bottom paints yeah. that it's it's a water bait and it's very sensitive for at least 24 hours maybe even 36 hours to even a drip of, of moisture can take it off and then having to fix that is a freaking yeah. nightmare so yeah. this is even more important i know this was super labor intensive i know and do, i'm battling but... with doing this because 90 or 95 percent possibility everything would be fine so we're planning for that five percent but it's like we just better do it yeah we better just do it yeah i agree well it looks good honey well, i've got mac i think it's great i do I. so uh before we get going i have sandwiches and also a very crucial thing for us to keep going red bull did you say red bull <laughs> oh my gosh honey. you want one Maybe. <laughs> Not just yet. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Oh, I don't know. It it's looks nice pretty good. Cold. Oh, <laughs> God. That's amazing. She really did think of everything. I did. Thanks, babe. So here's the deal, you guys. A quick breakdown on anti-foul bottom paints. All bottom paints are, unfortunately, poison. Basically, there are two types. Either they can be made so poisonous, usually with copper or a heavy-duty biocide, that marine animals simply cannot grow on them, and these are generally called a hard bottom paint, or conversely, they can be made with a material that over time, and at a very controlled rate, will slough or wear off. So as growth appears and attaches to the bottom of the vessel, the paint, layer by layer, wears off and the marine growth is left behind in the wake of the boat, and this is called ablative. Neither option is good for the ocean, but it is a necessary evil, and over the years, products have evolved and become as environmentally friendly as possible. There are also a few other options like wraps and silicone, but they are still in their infancy and not nearly established industry-wide yet. Which brings me to copper coat, a variation of a hard bottom paint. The two aforementioned options are very similar in cost, application, and lifespan. Generally, for a vessel our size, it would cost two to $3,000 in material and labor, they both usually last about two years, and they can both generally be reapplied over existing coats, meaning you don't normally have to do much prep to reapply once the anti-file has worn thin. And this is where copper coat differs. The mad scientists over at copper coat have created an amazing product with a few substantial drawbacks. It cannot be applied over any existing coats of anti-file, meaning that an incredible amount of work has to go into the prepping of your hull for it and it costs about triple for material and quadruple for labor. But here's the upside and the main reason we have chosen to go with this paint. It lasts 10 years, 10 years. So not only do we not have to haul out again every two years, but that also means that we essentially are releasing less copper, basically a nasty biocide, into our beautiful oceans. And that's worth the cost and the extra labor for sure. It's happening. Yeah, Copper it coat. is on. There's a fair bit of, of stress in the air, probably oh. mostly my yeah. fault. Yeah. Um, but the plastic was definitely an added, you know. Oh yeah, something else I forgot to mention earlier. Copper coat's application process is extremely sensitive for a number of reasons and must be applied properly to avoid problems down the road. Luckily, we had friends on SV Animal Cracker, thanks Scott who had already done this job a year ago and whom we already learned a ton from. Okay, so I have my three mixers. One, two, oh, I'm sorry, three painters. One, two, and three. And you're the mixer. And my job is to pour one and one and one copper in yeah. here. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. As well as another YouTube channel, Thank You Sailing Red Seas, who was nice enough to jump on a FaceTime call with us the day of and go over some of the final details and even some of the things that had failed during their application of Copper Code two years ago. It literally, I think that's part of the reason to talk about going tacky with a roller, is if you put it on and you don't let it get tacky, the roller will just take it completely off again. Yeah. So it'll never stick. Here's what I learned about the key points to a proper application. First, the hull preparation is key and using a proper barrier coat or primer is paramount. Second, as you heard before, it is very sensitive to moisture for about 36 hours, so precautions must be taken in advance to ensure zero water touches the hull. Thirdly, the pot life of a mixed batch is about 45 minutes, so the clock is ticking and it must be applied quickly or else you risk losing a portion of a batch, which here costs us about $300 per batch or kit as they are called. Fourth, you have to wait long enough between coats that the previous layer is cured enough that it doesn't peel up with the next layer, but not too long where it cures too much and won't chemically bond with the next layer. For us, it meant pretty much rolling from stem to stern and then starting right over again with the next layer. Five times, back to back, non-stop. Oh, going under. Oh. <laughs> My favorite part. Oh my goodness. I love this. <laughs> Look at that smile on your face. I don't know why I get so much pleasure. Look at that clean, crisp line. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. So satisfying. I don't know why. <laughs> I could be a professional tape puller and I could be perfectly happy. Nice. Okay. We've done oh, one hole. Wow. That was it. Five layers. Yeehaw! Tom, where'd you go? How'd that go? Yeehaw! <laughs> you sounded more and more American every day. <laughs> and lastly, once the copper coat has cured for about 36 hours, it must be entirely sanded with 320 grit paper to scuff up the surface and remove the very first thin layer of epoxy, simply revealing the embedded copper, the active ingredient. Ready? Hands in the middle. Let's do this. Hands in the middle, team man. Thumbs on, on, the clock. Ah! <laughs> okay, guys. It is the final day to paint. We did the other haul yesterday, and we are doing the second haul today. Five layers of copper coat, and that's it. Then we gotta let it dry. And now we sand it. There's a then little we can sand, sand it afterwards. It's not sand sanding. It's like three cloning grits, so it's more like a buffing just to reveal the copper. But yeah. Anyways, I'm just saying this is it. <laughs> Crap, bro. There's a little bit of copper and it like turned this scab green. It's really weird. Gross. I know, my hands are green everywhere. I no, I know. <laughs> well, weeks of work has come down to this, this moment. So close. Oh, making me feel the pressure. Ooh. Ooh. Man, you got the glory. There you go. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Tom and I know this hole. It's just about every scrape, scratch, dent, <laughs> ding, honor. Yeah. You better make it. We'll make it. You can do it. 
There's just a teeny bit in the bucket if we had to. Okay, coming in. Oh my goodness. The last. The last bit, that's it. Oh. oh. All the way down. Dude, look at that going. Stop it. Babe. <laughs> you guys are kind of in my way. <laughs> We're here for the celebratory high five. Almost. 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 Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Here. I did it, baby. You're done. You're done. Give me a high five. Yeah! Shit, I'm to wait Mrs. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Oh! How does it feel? This is like a thousand pounds off our shoulders and about a thousand pounds on the boat. And <laughs> she's done. I mean, Can as soon as there's one line. milestone done though, there's another one. Yeah. yeah. We've got to sand it all again. Sand it all down <laughs> and we got to buff the boat and we got to put on the decal. So the work yeah. is not over. Yeah, I mean, but... it's exciting, but then, ugh. Oh, so yeah. wild. Okay, so now that that, now that the copper coating is done, we want to get back in the water. So today is Tuesday. It is somewhere around two o'clock at the moment on Tuesday, and we need to be finished everything by Friday. Um, and uh, the reason being is because no staff work here on Saturdays and Sundays. So realistically, we think we're going to be really finished on Saturday, but uh, we have to push and um, and be finished by Friday. Well, admittedly, we were over the hump and could kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. But like Tom said, we easily had five days worth of work that we were pushing to get done in three. So with a job list the size of Texas, it was right back to work and off to the races with more than enough work for all Chipped of us. Quite a bit off but honestly, the thought of another weekend in the yard was more than enough motivation to get it all done and get out of here. I really misspoke when I said that, uh, you know, I think we pre-celebrated. <laughs> and I misspoke when I said that we just have one easy last step. Just buff the hole. Just buff it. Just clean it. Just it's not sand sand. sanding. It's like three cloning grips, so it's more like a buffing just to reveal the copper, but yeah. No. Yeah. Misspoke. We painted. So how does this last step go for you right now because it seems like this way more bitch. work than you expected. This is a bitch. This is, it's like we've started over and like, I thought the hardest part was taking off the old um, bottom paint. And now it's as if we're doing the same process all over again. It sounds counterintuitive to sand something we just put on, but there's a lot of copper embedded in a epoxy and so if we were to leave it nothing would happen we wouldn't have any anti-foul because it's just pure epoxy so you have to sand off that top layer of epoxy to get down to the actual copper so we're sanding and according feels like we're taking off too much but according to copper coats salespeople, this is what you want to do you want to get it down to where it's pretty much no shiny spots left like this area mm -hmm. here looks really mm -hmm. good this area here looks really but good but like red seas was saying you know like you're gonna have the higher divots so yeah. of course you're gonna get that off first and the lower divots you're not even gonna get anyways yeah so. so so i would say that this is really good there some of this we've taken off a lot and then other places we haven't even you know we haven't it's 50 percent you know so so I think, like right here, it's 50%. I think that we are in really good shape. Okay. Um, I don't think we've taken off too much. That's we good. maybe could have gotten away with a little bit less, but this is what this is what we're, we've been told to do. So. Alrighty. Yeah. Good luck, money. honey. I know. I, I'm so green. Can you see that? You're like a little copper penny. I'm like a, I'm like the Statue of Liberty. Oh, honey, that's awful. Only West Liberty, and I'm not a statue. No, you got I'm so green though. There's, yeah, I just shimmer. I can just see all the copper. Honey, you should have been so, wearing something. Want to go shower? Good morning. Good morning. So I believe 
this quite possibly will be our last day on the hard. Um, and one of the last jobs that I need to do is actually mark the chain. And we're, I have these little markers. We're gonna drop the chain and remeasure every 10 feet uh, because at some point down the line, we've lost all the little markers and I have only just been counting by just sound and gauging it. So we're going to uh, remark that and that'll be one of the final jobs, hopefully, before we can get in the water tomorrow. Yeah. While Erica and our friend Josh labored with the huge, heavy, dirty chain, marking every 10 feet on the ground where it's actually measurable, Tom and I had our work cut out for us with something Eric and I have been looking forward to for quite some time. The addition of a new racing stripe. You know, since we're going to be so much faster now. Well that, and we needed to replace our original boot stripe since we had leveled and raised our water line. I priced out a new vinyl boot stripe and a new vinyl side sticker stripe and it was in the thousands, which just wasn't going to work. So instead, I searched for a commercial roll of vinyl that I could cut myself and get both out of one roll. And maybe not surprisingly, found exactly what I needed on Amazon for 170 bucks. And after rigging a quick cutting jig up a week ago, I had both cut and ready to install. So look at this. These are our sexy new gory. And uh, we've had to wait for a couple months so they started to like, they don't actually corrode like that. They, they're much cleaner and newer than they look right now. But look how slick that engineering is. So I'm real excited. This is how they go when you're sailing. So very, very low drag. In fact, some of the lowest drags, the drag of uh, all of the folding props. So this would be forward, and then when it goes like this, it goes like this into reverse. Do we want it to spin freely? In no, no, you don't. You want because that to creates stop. drag. So then it creates drag on the blades, exactly, okay. and it forces them to come back okay. like that. So we are. This is a very exciting new addition to the boat. Carry on. And you uh, put it on correctly. I hope so. <laughs> but these have a reputation of falling you off. Last today, yeah. yeah. I had to. You put it on correctly, yeah. Warren. You put yeah. it on right, right? Beautiful. This is what gonna make go so much faster. So much faster. This and this. Yeah. And our racing stripes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. 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 Right, Tom? Right. right. So we got one more to put on and then. We are so, 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 so close to going back in the water. So close. Am I going to have my husband back? Yeah. Be so much yeah. nicer. Ah, oh, I hope. Why is that stuff? Do you hope so too, Tom? I do. He's been annoying me. <laughs> At least somebody agrees with me. I don't know. Here, baby. That be. <laughs> doing a deep clean on her before we get into the water and luckily it's also raining to help <laughs> us out but today is the day I think we've yes. spent officially three weeks on the hard so we did okay I got that spot okay good got it okay yeah you feel better yeah uh, 
We have spent officially three weeks on the hard, and we are looking forward to it. We did a really good job. You guys did a really good job. We did. It's too making it a push to get in the water as fast as possible. Okay, you're gonna have to step out. I can't stop. Let me finish. You can take a moment. He's very anxious, obviously. We to have a lot of work get in to the do. water. We do have a lot of work to do, but we need to update, babe. Can you step out and do it? getting there. We are feeling a little bit of pressure. Um, we were told nine o'clock call out and they're like ready to go. It's 745 but we need a little time. That's all. We're gonna get there. Tom, how do you feel? We just need 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah, it's very exciting to haul out or I'm sorry, haul out and splash the boat but there is just some stress involved. I'm literally just holding- I know, I know, I know, Warren. I'm trying to prevent slipping. Okay, it's all yours, I got nothing. Why the long face? The pressure is on, I'm feeling the stress. Yeah, me too. You're wearing it on your face. I know. Literally. Normally I'm a smiling person, but I'm not smiling. Can you get the You have a mustache. Only on your left side, though. I know. I got muddy. I got dirty. I'm getting pressure. Hey. It's a lot to do to, before we get in the water. There's a lot of things that are on our minds and whatnot. And yeah. Especially since they told us high tide, which is 10, and then they said 9. And no, then they, they were always. Ready at they eight. always said 9, but they. They came at the boat at 7.30 and it was like, okay, let's go. We were, and I was like, Shit. Uh, no, you told us nine. <laughs> Give us some time. So we were feeling pressure not only from like each other, but them. Yeah. But we're getting in the waters. That's really. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yo, what is it? Okay. Yo, ah! Oh, what is this? Behind cleaning. Oh no. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. What did you get? Our own marcation uh, maintenance uh, uh, shirts. <laughs> Tattoos. Yeah, nice. That's not a tattoo. Honey. No, 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 but this is. Maybe slow down. Okay. Okay. Sweet. That's so nice. It yeah, it is. This yard has been. Very nice to us, for sure. Yeah, they are. Very expensive. But all of the marquesas and all of French Polynesia is very expensive. Sorry, I left the frame. So the final bill was 7000 700 and we've already paid 6,000 so I'm no mathematician but that's pretty expensive for uh, the that haul out and bottom paint haul out time in the yard bottom paint yeah I mean they charged everything I mean they charged for us all to stay on the boat which is basically five dollars a day per person right? yeah per person yeah it adds up and then uh, they charged us for a month of electric because we were here for using the electric mm -hmm. and then uh, the bottom paint was real expensive. All the materials are expensive. I mean, a thing of um, a thing of uh, acetone, which would be like five to ten bucks back home, is twenty-five dollars here. One thing, and we went through three of them. Seventy-five dollars in acetone. I mean, it's like as expensive as gold. Yeah. So yeah, thirteen thousand for the haul out, the storage, and the bottom, the bottom job. So. Like our videos, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Please. <laughs> Please help us out. Tell a friend. And we might even host another yeah, charter. In the water. This is our boy. This is our friend, man. He helped us oh, out so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank on you. Après. après, on va prendre une bière, OK? OK. <laughs> and we might even uh, host another charter. So, OK. Yes! <laughs> We're going to need to pay for this somehow. <laughs> Yeah, the key here is just going slow. I mean, these guys are pretty dang good at running this operation. I've been very impressed with the boat management. And I mean, it's amazing that that little thing can move this boat, not just move it around, but down that ramp. That's very impressive, so.
They know what they're doing. I hope. <laughs> Here we go. Bye, Ma. Yeah. Bye, Yard. Very exciting day. <laughs> it's one of the most exciting days. We are so, so, so over the noise and the dirt and the mess and the cats and the chickens and freaking the mess. I mentioned the mess, the dirt, the dust, the long days. Damn. Now I'm sure you guys have heard the saying that the two best days in a sailor's life are the day he buys his boat and then the day he sells his boat. Well a very close third is splash day and in our case this splash day might just trump the day we bought her. Say again? I cannot believe how he's able to maneuver around that truck and trailer. I know, that's impressive. It's only the police truck. You right? Can okay. This is nuts. Yeah. It's just going down, down, down now. Babe, I cannot believe how far up we are. It is freaky. Yeah, it is. It is freaky. Wow. Okay, moment of truth. Power up, you you power it up, see? Okay. Alright, I'm gonna power up the port side. Power Okay. Well, we're gonna start with the port. Alright. Moment of truth, we're getting in the water here and uh, hope that everything checks off. Woo! So, the boat's sitting on the trailer, they leave it there. We check all the through holes, we check all the things that we played with. Checking all the through holes, make sure there's no leaks. We're checking when the engine runs that there's um, salt water coming out the exhaust. Double check. I will. Tom just said. It well. looks like on the port side, engine isn't getting any water out the exhaust, any salt water. So I wonder what's going on over there. There's no water coming out the other one. We're pissing. Not what? that one. Double check. I will. Tom just said. We got water out of this then? We got water. Okay, Warren. We should have it, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, you're at the helm? Yes, we did. I'm going to need you up front. Yep. You're going to catch Okay. She floats, huh? My heart is still going, still going. <laughs> Babe, how about yours? My heart is going, my heart is pounding. Yeah. So the next thing I think is let's get, let's get uh, turned around here and I'll get pointed into the wind and then we'll get Tom on board. What do you think? Yeah, we'll just tie him off to the side for now. Oh, you want to do that? That's fine. Yep. That's a good yep. idea, actually. Yep. Sure. Let's actually, let's do 60 and then the bridle. All right, we are good. We have gotten anchored. Despite our windlass not working right, right, quite right. The windlass is actually working, but the remote isn't. So we're having to short across in the rail relay. So it actually right now is taking a couple, couple of people, one person to actually anchor and watch it and then the other person to get into a different compartment and short the relay. 
very complicated stuff here really um, but we figured it out we got anchored and we're comfortable and i think even though it's 10 o'clock in the morning i'm gonna have a beer I heard a fucking yeah, doggy. Okay. We're friends again? Yes. How good. I like being friends with you better than enemies. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well guys, this is normally where we would thank you guys, and especially our Patreons. And not that we don't still appreciate every last one of you, but this video has to be dedicated to the true hero here, our friend Tom, who without his help, we would probably still be in the yard months later, and possibly divorced. <laughs> he was instrumental in helping bang out all the projects that we could only do while in the water, and all he asked for in return was a comfortable bed and good food. Tom, you are a legend, and we owe you, buddy, huge. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Please, you guys, send him some love for us by checking out his Instagram, or even better yet, maybe by the time you are watching this, he will have videos on his young but promising YouTube channel called What in the World. Have a great rest of your week, folks.